Hello, 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 grade 11s, welcome to Educate. Uh, I strongly recommend that you watch my previous videos uh, based on plant biodiversity and the, um, the different divisions of the kingdom plantae. So now today we are looking at specifically the angiosperms. Remember I've said that the angiosperms are flowering plants. So we're going to look at flowers and pollination and that concept of flowers and how they are pollinated. So now flowers are those beautiful things that we usually like. Sometimes we call our girlfriends flowers because they are beautiful and stuff. But now flowers are just those beautiful things that we find in plants, in angiosperms to be specific. So they've got two roles. The role of plants is to, to attract pollinators as well as they act as reproductive structures. So a reproduction in angiosperms it is through flowers. Remember the production it is just a uh, multiplying in a sense you know like when when something is giving birth to something to us humans it will be giving birth but to plants it will be flowers it will be pollination but uh, we're gonna look at this in the video so that we understand what these functions mean actually so now <laughs> Uh, this is how a flower looks like. This is the structure of a flower. So the labels that are not that important on the flower, it is the sepal, it is the pedicel, as well as the receptacle. So these three labels are, are not usually asked in your question papers and your exams. So do not worry too much about knowing what a sepal, a pedicel, and a receptacle do. But then you can see that the receptacle, it is sort of like balancing the whole flower, like the whole flower is on top of a receptacle. So its function is more like, um, it's, it's, it's easy to see. And also the pedicel, you can see that it is just balancing the flower. But as for the sepal, the functions are not that important. So now the flowers are used for the production. So that this means that uh, for plants to reproduce or for plants to make more plants, they need to go through certain reproduction using flowers. So flowers have got two parts. It has got a stamen, which is known as a male part of a flower. So the stamen, the stamen is known as a male part. So the male part of the flower, it is the stamen. It is made up of two things, which is the anther, this first part, this yellow thing here. Uh, let me just use my pointer this yellow thing here you can see that this yellow thing here on the flower this is known as the anther of a flower and then um this the, the, the this rod like structure that is descending down it is known as a filament so the anther and the filament make up the stamen of a flower or the male part of a flower so um, a flower has got a male and a female part both of, both of them in one so it is not yeah, it is sort of uh, too sexual in a way. Yeah, it has got two parts, a male and a female part. So now the stamen is the male part. It is the anth and the filament. So inside the anth, uh, pollen is produced. There is this thing known as pollen that is produced. So now the male part produces pollen. Specifically, it is the anth. These yellow things produce small things that is known as pollen. So the pollen is produced in the anth. And then now uh, this is the role of the male part in reproduction. We're going to see what does the pollen do later on. And then now the female part of a plant it is known as a pistil. So the pistil it is known as a female part. So uh, a plant cannot be a boy or a girl. It is both in a sense. So now this, 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 this plant has got this part known as a pistil. So a pistil it is the combination of a stigma, a style, ovary and ovule. You can see all this blue thing, this blue thing from here, the top part it is known as the stigma. The top part here it is known as the stigma. And then this road like structure that descends it is known as a style. And then this outer layer, this outer layer, the outer layer of um, this outer layer of of a flower, which I'm highlighting here with yellow, it is known as an ovary. And inside the ovary, we see this thing known as an ovule. So an ovule is actually a plant gamete. An ovule is actually a plant gamete. But then we're gonna look at that later on. So now the thing is, uh, the pistil actually receives the pollen. So the function or the role of the pistil or the female part it is to receive 
pollen grains. So since we've said that pollen is produced here at the anther, that pollen actually moves and enters the stigma. So the stigma actually receives the pollen grains and then they move down, they move down, they move down, and then they get inside the ovule. So when they get inside the ovule, these pollen grains, when they get inside the ovule, something will happen. But before that, let us look at the petal. The petal is the big part of the plant. It is a big part of the plant, and then it is the colorful part of the plant. For you to see that um, uh, this flower, this is a flower. How do you identify that this is a flower? You see by the petals. So the petals are the main parts of the flower. They are big and they are colorful most of the times. You know, a red flower, you see it with the red petals. A white flower, you see it with white petals. A blue flower with uh, blue petals. Um, yeah, all those types and colors of flowers. So the petal is colorful. So it's a, it's a role is to attract pollinators. So we're going to look at what those pollinators are later on. But just know that the petal's role is to attract them. And then now, um, now the thing is, since we've said that pollen moves from the anther and goes inside the stigma, uh, it will descend down the stigma. It will descend down the stigma. And then when it reaches the ovule, the combination of an ovule, the combination of an ovule and the pollen, the combination of an ovule and the pollen will give us a seed. So a seed. So the seeds that we see, uh, they're actually from the combination of the ovule and the pollen. So the ovule is just this part inside the ovary. And then the pollen, it is those uh, small grains that are produced at the end, um, the one that I've talked about earlier on. So these small grains, when they meet the ovule, they will produce what we say is known as a seed of a plant. And then um, the ovary, now what will happen when this whole, okay, this whole process whereby the ovule and pollen produces a seed, it is known as fertilization. So we actually say that the pollen fertilizes the ovule, just like in humans, the sperm cell fertilizes the egg cell. So here, similarly, the pollen fertilizes the ovule and then it creates a seed. So now the, the ovary now, the ovary now changes as well. So after fertilization has occurred, after fertilization has occurred, the ovule forms a seed and then the ovary will thicken and it will form a fruit. Yes, so this is how fruits are formed, such as apples. So when you're seeing a round apple like this, this part, this round part of the apple, it was actually the ovary, but because it is thickened and it formed a fruit, so the seed will be inside the fruit. So remember that the seed it is from the combination of the ovule and the, and the pollen, right? So now this will be the seed, and then the ovary now will change and become fruit it will thicken so if you, have, you, you ever see fruits they actually they actually develop from plants that have flowers or for example oranges or for example tomatoes i don't know if people say tomato is a fruit or a vegetable but you see when you are planting tomatoes first they will be a flower then then after uh, uh, after the presence of a flower then we can see the tomatoes growing so it is because um they form fruit so whenever we've got a flower after fertilization fruit is formed and then a seed will be enclosed inside that fruit um the, that's just one of the properties of angiosperms so now let's look at this process of pollination so we've already talked about pollination like basically because we've said that a uh, the pollen moves from an anther we've said that the pollen is produced at the anther it is produced at the anther in the male part or at the stamen here. This is the anther, this yellow thing. So when the pollen grain is produced at this yellow thing or at this anther, when that pollen is transferred, you can see we've said that it moves, right? When that pollen is transferred to the stigma, when the pollen, when those pollen grains are transferred, from the anther to the stigma, the process is known as pollination. So pollination is the transfer of pollen from anther to stigma. So we've got two types of pollination. We've got self-pollination as well as cross-pollination. So since we've said that um, a plant it is not really 
it doesn't have one gender to be specific it has got a male part and a female part so it, it can actually do itself it can actually reproduce on its own look at this diagram diagram a here you can see that um this is an example of self-pollination diagram a so in self-pollination pollen is transferred between the anther and the stigma of the same plant or of the same flower so you can see that here since we have said that the pollen is produced here at the what at the end right it will move and it will enter the what the stigma so the plant is actually fertilizing itself on its own so plants are plants can be asexual that's why we say that angiosperms can be asexual because they can reproduce on their own they don't really need to have sexual intercourse and stuff like that they can reproduce on their own and then you say that's known as self-pollination so so in self-pollination the pollen it is moving from the anther to the stigma of the same flower of the yeah, let's just say of the same flower to keep things simple so we have we, we say that um a plant can pollinate itself and then cross-pollination is another one whereby pollen can be transferred from the flower of one plant to the flower of another plant so during cross-pollination there there are two people okay no there are two flowers actually so there are two flowers that are pollinating each other so you can see here the diagram which i'm highlighting here the one labeled b so in this figure what is actually happening remember that the pollen is being produced here here where i'm pointing here at the enter and then now the pollen moves 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 and then it goes into the stigma of another different flower so that is known as cross pollination cross pollination it has got two flowers uh, so pollen is transferred from the flower of one plant to the flower of another plant or you can say between two different flowers it is not like figure a whereby the 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 the, the plant was able to just reproduce on its own but figure b you can see that um they assist each other in reproducing the the seed and whatnot so yeah that's how it goes those are the types of pollination remember pollination is just the transfer we are just transferring pollen from an anther to stigma but during self-pollination the pollen is moving from the anther of from anther to stigma of the same flower this is the same flower so the flower is fertilizing itself whereas in cross-pollination it is moving from the anther of one flower to a different flower or let's just say from the flower of one plant to another different flower so now you may uh, wonder how does this pollen moves because we have been talking about the transfer of pollen transfer how is the pollen transferred or how does pollen move from enter to stigma because pollen is not a, it is not mobile it cannot move on its own it is not an animal or something that has got wings to fly and move so now uh, how does um the pollen move this is what we'll answer in this uh, in this next sections so there are methods of pollination we have got uh, these three uh, methods of pollination so these three things we say they're known as pollinating agents so when we are talking about pollinating agents we are talking about birds insects as well as the wind so those are the things that assist with the transfer of pollen or the ones that assist with moving pollen from an enter to the stigma so now insects insects just like the first image which i've put here image number one you can see that this is a bee and then it is doing something to the flower most of the times you see insects on top of a flower doing something so those insects uh, what they're actually doing they are they are actually taking the pollen from the flower and they want to transfer it to another flower not that the animals want the fertilization to happen but they actually want nectar so now i forgot to add the definition of nectar here but then nectar it is just a a, a sweet it is just a sweet and then it is a sugar rich it is sweet and it is rich in sugar 
So it's a sweet sugar rich liquid that is produced in flowers or found in flowers. So this thing of nectar, uh, it is very sweet. You can hear it is sweet and then it is full of sugar. Uh, so when the insects, when the insects come and you know sit on top of the of the flower and stuff, they're actually not taking the pollen. They're actually trying to to suck the nectar from the plant, and then during the sucking process, um, the pollen sticks into their bodies. So now when these insects move to another flower, uh, that pollen will be left at that flower. So this is how the insects transfer pollen. Not that the insects want to take, the, but they've got an intention or maybe they want to go and fetch pollen from the anther to move it to the stigma. But no, they're actually looking for this thing known as nectar. So nectar, it is just a sweet sugar rich liquid. Um, that is found in flowers. Nectar is usually used to make honey. You see, honey is very sweet. So it is because it is coming from nectar as well. So now uh, this, uh, these insects only pollinate bright colored petals. Yeah, or flowers with bright colored petals. We're not talking about bright color. We're talking about, you know, red, all those bright colors. So for example, this flower here, I think this is red. This is red or maybe this is pink, but then this is definitely bright colored. The color is visible enough. So now the insects will go and try to get the nectar from the flower. And then the pollen grains will just stick. The pollen grains will just stick on top of the insect such that when the insects will, will start um, going to another different flower, that pollen grain will, will be left on that flower. So insects are pollinating agents. So they target uh, flowers that have got bright colored petals and that have also a sweet scent. So a sweet scent it is just a good uh, smell, you know, flowers that smell nice. There are other flowers that feel, smell nice. Most of the times the insects like those flowers that smell nice with a sweet scent. And then the birds can also pollinate. You can see that uh, in figure two here, the second figure, you can see this is a bed. And then this bed, it is just hanging around the flower. So what is it actually doing? It is actually doing the same thing as an insect. It is sucking the nectar from the flower. Remember that uh, most flowers produced, produce this uh, sweet sugar rich liquid. So now the, the, the intention of this bed it is to suck it off. So now when it is sucking this, uh, this nectar, what is actually happening? The, um, the pollen grains will also be sticking on the bed in a sense so when it is a uh, when it is drinking this nectar uh, the pollen grains will be just stuck on the on the bed so when it goes to the next flower when this bed goes to the next flower this pollen will be left on that flower and then pollination will occur remember pollination is just the transfer of pollen so the bed literally transferred it. So birds usually target big red flowers. So they want red flowers most of the times. So if they ask which pollinating agents uh, target red flowers, it is usually the birds. And then those flowers must have a lot of nectar. So the birds like a lot of nectar. You can see most of the times, most of the times you see birds on top of flowers and they'll be like, drinking something from the flowers then you ask yourself what is that so they're actually trying to drink the nectar so the birds target the flowers with a lot of nectar and then it has got no scent so they also target flowers that do not have a smell because birds can they do not have a good sense of smell so you know those flowers that do not smell good at all the birds like them and then now the wind is also a pollinating agent. The wind, we're actually talking about the air, the moving air. So the flowing air or the moving air. It is also a pollinating agent because um, you see, like, let's just say this is the flower. Look at uh, uh, figure three. This is These are all flowers. You can see these are all flowers. And then the flowers are being blown away by the wind. So when the wind is blowing away the flowers, what actually happens? the pollen grains fall off or maybe they can move from one anther to one stigma is um, so wind pollination it is also possible so wind 
uh, wind actually targets small flowers most of the times and then those flowers with no scent and then they do not have nectar as well so they do not have a smell they do not have a what they do not have a, a, a nectar because the wind is just a it does not want the sweet things but the insects and the birds they're actually targeting the sweet things that is why um that is why you see uh, insects sucking the nectar here at figure one and birds sucking the nectar at figure two but at figure three there is no nectar it is just the air that is blowing away the flowers such that uh, the pollen grains will move from one anther to another stigma so this is it and yes so i hope that you understand everything about the structure of flowers that is why i say that uh, flowers attract pollinators and they are also reproductive structures so when you're explaining this thing of reproductive structures you just explain that um angiosperms reproduce using flowers whereby pollen is transferred maybe they can say explain why flowers are reproductive structures you just explain the concept of pollination that uh, inside flowers uh, pollen is produced at the end that it is transferred to the stigma and then fertilization will okay all of those things are associated with pollination so it means that flowers are reproductive structures or they are the site of reproduction they, they are they are the places where reproduction okay in angiosperms and then they also attract pollinators remember that uh, the petals of a flower are bright colored or they are beautiful they look beautiful for for us to say that a rose is beautiful it is because we see that uh, that deep red color of the petals so now the flowers attract pollinators not that i'm a pollinator but i feel attracted to flowers as well yes so yes that's it about um the the, the the flowers and pollination don't forget to subscribe tell your friends to stay tuned and